12.32 a.m., the Mueller Motor Works Ford Focus ST race team arrives at Gingerman. This is On Track. at Gingerman late to Friday, uh, which is fine. We uh, found our spot, set up camp for the evening, and uh, got ready for Saturday morning. The focus starts off the day with a promising run and warm up. But yeah, first time out on track, I think it's just under two miles long, 11 turns, uh, very sharp stuff. Uh, turn one was very, very tight. A lot of the sweepers in the back section, which, you know, you got to be on point and have your, your line pretty perfect to get a good lap out of, so. Travis lands a solid minute 44.7. Yeah, new track, new pavement, very interesting. Yeah, it's got grip, but it's a very sharp edge from yeah. where it's, you know, you're like, yeah, yeah, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. You know. Is it but black yeah. top? Yeah, it's all black top. There's the, the back stretch is the only part that they did pave, but according to our handy dandy aim solo, uh, we're only two seconds off in competitive time, so. And that was out in that mucky muck of traffic and people spinning off left, right, and center. <laughs> Me not knowing where I'm going yet. So. All right. The drivers are called for the first time session, but the team experiences a slight hiccup with the Focus ST. Prior to the first time session on Saturday, uh, I heard bits of clunking coming from the front of the car, and at first I thought, you know, okay, is it a driveline issue, do we have an axle going, you know, something like that. Well, luckily it only ended up being uh, the clips for the boost control solenoid that's located on the side of the motor near the frame rail uh, on the front of the car came loose from the motor and it was occasionally going dink right into the frame rail making that noise. So Kyle slid under there, uh, zip tied it back up, secured it and off we went. Losing minimal time, uh, got out, got up to grid just as the session was starting. So nothing hairy, nothing crazy. But, you know, just one of those things when, you know, you rip a car apart completely and put it back together. Luckily it was only that. With one less opportunity to make it on the leaderboard, the team pulls the focus together, landing a strong minute 42 even for the third session. Ran a 44 according to this thing, so that's close. Uh, Mustang guy, buddy Fred, Dan there, ran a 43 warm up. But I don't know where I'm going, and he does again, so. there with the, the boost solenoid and whatnot. Um, so hopefully, well, I know we'll be starting further up in the grid, so there won't be that much traffic in the way, hopefully. So we'll get a couple clean runs. And I'm starting to figure out the important bits. Just as the focus comes off the track, the rain hits. The rain clears, but the track remained damp until the last session, compromising grip and reducing the chance of the team besting their overall time.
The early morning leaves the cars covered with dew. There's not a single threatening rain cloud in the sky and the sun creates a calming glisten on the track. Seeing as it was the team's first time at Gingerman uh, and with the new pavements that they laid down, didn't exactly know what kind of tire wear we were gonna get or how hard we were gonna be on the brakes. Uh, but with the, the new pavement, grip levels were up, which meant uh, braking zones were pushed further back, which means we were way harder on the brakes. Uh, after the Sunday warm up, we were right at the end of Sunday warm up, I should say, the uh, brake pedal started feeling, you know, not as good as I needed it to be. Uh, so we popped the front wheels off, checked the brakes, uh, saw that the pads were starting to get low, which means uh, the heat transfer was getting to them, which means they were getting squishy. So we swapped pads. Unfortunately, that meant we missed the first time session due to the fact that we had, uh, in a different session's warm up, not our session, their morning warm up, uh, somebody buried, I think two cars went off, one went way off into the bushes uh, at turn 10 and somebody put it in the sand trap uh, at 11. So I think we had a 45 minute delay uh, and NASA trying to be the good guys they are, uh, took minutes and seconds from each other session to try and catch up and get back on schedule. Uh, they also revised the schedule a couple of times. So we lost the first session due to, uh, you know, just being unfortunate timing uh, on our on our end and uh, on NASA's end, but hey, it's it's going to be what it's going to be. As the track bakes under the hot July sun, the turns become harder to manage, and the car becomes more unwieldy. So uh, I guess you can say Gingerman didn't go exactly according to plan, but still was a, a very uh, successful weekend. Still finished on the podium both days, still got good points for the championship. Uh, obviously would have loved to finish higher and had a slightly more, uh, just, a, just a closer run to the top there. Yeah, but at least we know where our competition is at now. Uh, Looks like we're gonna skip National Corvette Museum to be fully prepared and ready to melt faces at Road America. Uh, need to get some good championship points there. It's the home game, so I don't want to lose to anybody. So we're gonna we're gonna spend the, the next month. It looks like just prepping ourselves for the big show up at RA. Uh, is it the uh, beginning of August? So we've got many laps there. I have no excuses not to do good. So we gotta have the car on point, which we will. Uh, I'll, I'll be on point, because I don't have to worry about showing up at a place I've never ran before and figuring it out in two sessions. So it'll be nothing but 100% uh, there. So I can't wait.